we're talking about our best metal albums of 2022. These got us super excited. It's the best of the year. Let's do it. My first pick, Psy Shiki, released August 16th. I had a difficult time picking my favorite black metal record of the year, but if I went purely based on listen count, yes, even since August, the decision without a doubt goes to Sai's latest epic release, Shiki. Sai is most well known as a progressive slash avant-garde black metal outfit hailing from Japan. The tales that the band are capable of telling bring you straight into the stunning and intriguing beauty included in Japanese culture and myth, spinning tranquility and madness at every brilliant brilliant moment of the runtime. All of these amazing decisions about the album flow, changes in dynamics, and the details in the instrumentation, Psy know how to tell these tales with their music better than so many other bands in the extreme metal genre. This album to its core had me transfixed with its breathtaking compositions. Shiki isn't just one of the best metal records of 2022. It's easily one of Psy's best records, period. Do not miss this album if you're looking for an inward black metal journey, you will not be disappointed. I love this album, dude. I love that it's on your list. I cannot get enough of this record. It's easily in the top five this year. It's so fucking awesome. <laughs> Disillusion, it's been a long time favorite of ours and to be running this channel while they're making a comeback just feels super special. This band and this album in particular just picks up right where Opeth left off. You know, kind of like what we said earlier, some of the bands that are picking up in like the Watershed, Ghost Reveries era. The flow of this album is just utterly perfect. It feels like an epic journey through the human experience, forcing you to face the pleasures and traumas of simply existing in the 21st century. This illusion is highly unique, highly talented, and highly, highly overlooked. Yeah, they're high. Despite the album running close to an hour, this is one of the best paced records of this year. There are soft, almost inaudible moments on here, contrasted by brutally syncopated neck-breaking riffs, but they're not just all slapped together haphazardly. It's all wonderfully constructed and brilliantly executed. This very well could be my number one of the year, but I think it's kind of interchangeable with so many of these albums that we're kind of talking about. I just love this record and I'm so happy to see them releasing this quality of stuff so late into their career. Yeah, this is a perfect pick. I think this one and also Abstract Illusion are probably tied for best of the year. It's tough for me to pick between the two. Damn. Blind Guardian, The God Machine, released September 2nd. I can't believe this band has been around for nearly 40 years and is putting out records that are this fucking fantastic. One big thing that I really appreciated about The God Machine is that the band went for a more traditional Blind Guardian approach and decided to go for more full-blown thrashy power metal and leave off the excess orchestral elements of their previous few records. As much as I love the grandiose features of their previous material, the epicness of the band's songwriting is still intact here with massive hook choruses and those huge harmonized guitar leads that just make this band unbelievably as amazing as they always have been. The band's ability to strip things back but still feel like everything is in excess is actually quite an accomplishment. Every song on the God Machine is fun as hell and actually pretty goddamn heavy at times, which I believe was a great decision to appease the fans of the band and bring in the newbies. This was the record that I desperately wanted after Twilight Orchestra and I haven't stopped spending it since September. That's why it's on my album of the year list for 2022. I love this record, man. And again, this is another one that could just be interchanged in my like top five from this year. It's like Blind Guardian like saw their version of their music and like stripped it down, like put like sport 
like muffler on it and like we're just like you know what we're gonna go back to like our our roots and it's so good dude it's heavy as fuck at times (laughs) yeah I wanted to give you all an eclectic list here, and this is about as close to power symphonic as my picks are gonna get. I've talked about this album a lot this year, and while it may not be on repeat as much as something like Disillusion or Psy, this is an album that really holds its own. One of the things I've noticed from releases this year is that many of the symphonic oriented bands are sounding super cinematic, and this is one of those records. Some of the sequences remind me of like blockbuster Hollywood movies, like a Marvel movie where you expect like action heroes to be flying around and shit like that. The performances on here, stellar, dude. Dino Jalusic's vocals grab you by the fucking crotch, man. Romeo's playing is tighter and more diverse than ever. The team behind the production in playing on here have just nailed it. This was one of my first perfect scores of the year. It has stayed so solid, and I just can't get enough of this album. Yep, and if you're eagerly waiting for new Symphony X, this will this will hold you over. That's for sure. Soilwork is one of the more underappreciated OG melodic death metal bands, and to see Soilwork still killing it and improving somehow is awesome. This newest effort quickly became one of my favorite albums in their entire run of records. Although it's a bit on the lengthier side, you know, over an hour or so, I have no idea what I would cut for songs out of the lineup. The band has clearly learned how to balance that extreme metal side with progressive and classic rock epic melodies in the best way. I feel like it's a new level for the band in their execution in a lot of ways. It's clear that Bjorn has learned a lot about writing catchy vocal hooks, not only from his early days in soil work, but also with his other melodic rock, 80s inspired band, Night Flight Orchestra. Some of these choruses are easily some of the best that have been released this year, period. I've had this album on repeat since it came out and it has everything from blistering speed blast beats and melodic death metal riffing to those fist pumping rock riffs and it just works, dude. It's sad to hear about the passing of their guitarist, David Anderson, shortly after the release. What a talented soul gone far too young. If you want to respect the band, spin their record, man, and you can't beat it. Yeah, man, I was not surprised that you put this on on the list. I know you were very excited about it, and I really do think that this very well could be like a seminal part of their catalog. Yeah, I think it's easily their best record, honestly, in their whole catalog in a lot of ways. Yep. A very recent addition in the only album on here that it's getting its first and p- probably only review from us. In 2020, Green Carnation blew us away with Leaves of Yesteryear. This year, their counterparts in In the Woods have stolen our fucking heart with their utterly perfect and profound record, Diversum. Between Disillusion and In the Woods, we've gotten some serious fucking surprises this year with bands that I totally fucking forgot about and are creeping back onto my radar. And holy shit, what a treat for us, bro. Front to back, this album rips. The production is flawless. The songs sound like they're pulled straight out of the 90s, very similar to what Dark Millennium did on Acid River. The progressive doom of the 90s was not all that great all the time back then. It was very rough. The players had a hard time, like, performing their own riffs and fills and transitions but those of us that love the genre we were willing to forgive the warts because the power wasn't in the performance it was in the atmosphere the melody the emotion of the music diversum delivers that weird progressive introspective atmosphere while firing on all fucking cylinders in the performance department this is a seasoned band quite possibly at the peak of their career Easily one of the best in the progressive doom department and probably one of the best albums I've heard in like years, dude. I mean, I don't really throw the word masterpiece out very often, but this is definitely one of those records. (laughs) 
I don't know why I loved this album as much as I did because I make fun of their band name. <laughs> I was surprised to see this one yeah. on your list. Yeah. Uh, it's weird, but you know, you like what you like. Yeah. Fallujah Imperium released September 9th. Man, this record got better and better upon every listen and quickly became one of my favorites of 2022. I think I'm starting to develop an ear for extreme metal that is on the progressive side, mostly because my album of the year list is jam full of atmospheric, technical, and straight up crushing melodic and progressive metal releases. Fallujah have released not only their best sounding metal record so far in 2022, but I can't believe how unbelievably well this album flows from front to back despite it being so long. The instrumental and technical sections of Empyrean truly are a sight to behold, but there's also careful appreciation for catchy and emotional sections to really drive home what makes this record so fantastic. I love those delayed drenched guitars, ethereal sounding vocals, supporting the harsh vocal sections, huge choruses at times. The band is just writing at their peak here with technical, heavy, and emotional compositions. Absolutely brilliant in every way. It totally deserves a spot on this 2022 list despite their dumb band name. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't checked this one out, man. And uh, to see that it's on your one of your best of the years list, I think I'm gonna have to go back and spin it. It's so good. And weren't you in Fallujah? <laughs> I have been there. <laughs> <laughs> an album that we talked about already but you talked about it and now it's my turn hangman's chair has rightfully been on the tip of our tongues for a lot of this year following along bands like uh ruins of beverus you like ruins of beverus a lot right hangman's chair pulls a lot of influence from the 90s goth metal scene injecting dreamy atmospheres into our brains every instrument is drenched in reverb chorus and the songwriting is just marvelous man is guaranteed to be at least one or two earworms before you turn this record off. My only minor gripe with this is some of their heavy sections sound like stained or like corn. It's probably just because their guitar and their bass tones are very much in that like sonic range and the tuning that they're in, you know, it's all like the same. I guess it's just not what I would expect from like a gothic doom band, but I can very easily overlook it. I think it's fine most of the time. This is just one of the, the best of the year. I love the record front to back, an amazing closer, like you said. And just overall, this is just such a great album. Big fucking surprise, an abstract illusion. Whoa, we've been talking about an abstract illusion a lot it's on this like channel. every list. <laughs> yeah, it is. And they deserve the spot at the top of this album of the year list simply because how much we didn't know that this album could be this good and how much I've fucking listened to it. This album astounded the hell out of both of us, especially because we had never heard the band prior to Woe's release. The record is merciless emotional, saturated with atmosphere, and totally desolate sounding in all of the best ways. You know, it's funny because I don't really go for progressive metal releases, even though I've listed a few progressive metal bands, so maybe my taste is changing, but everything here is just executed to precision that I just love it because of that. The production is stunning, pushing that balance of vicious and stunning. The songwriting is pristine, favoring twists and turns, but they're not afraid to jam on those long passages that just get you totally in the zone. If I had to compare Woe to other metal bands, I'd probably say something like Opeth or Enslaved, but they're totally doing their own thing with it and improving on it in a lot of ways. This band is getting a ton of recognition in 2022 and it's completely deserved. Can't say enough good things about it, man. It's just so, it's so good, dude. It's, yeah, it's the album of the year, I believe. Yeah. Close.
closing off my picks today with my favorite death metal record. One of your favorite death metal records. I mean, dude, it's been on so many lists here. I feel like we've just talked about it so much. They absolutely delivered on all that was promised. I don't know if they actually promised a good release, but I'm just saying that, and that's a lie, but they promised that it was gonna be this good. No, they didn't. Dude, what more do we need to say about this? This band knows how to fucking release something amazing, unleashing a fury, bringing you down with some of those melodic and the prog elements, and then snapping you in half with those ravaging black metal influences. Dude, sometimes I want a death metal record that, you know, feels as introspective as it does brutal. And that's exactly what Hath has delivered here. The prog elements take you inside your own mind. And there are some of those jammy weirdness spots. Which really, whoa. Black and death really helps to bring you back into the catacombs and tear you apart. When I first took notes about this record, I wrote down Where Owls Know My Name Part 2. Look, after sitting with this, I think that is fucking pretty accurate, really. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Rivers of Nile and uh, Hath are doing their own thing, but I really think that Hath kind of picked up where Rivers of Nile left off. Really happy with what Rivers of Nile is doing, but if you wanted Where Owls Know My Name Part 2, Hath has got it for you. One of my first gold medal picks of the year. Easily one of my favorites. Again, another interchangeable name in the top five for me this year. If this is where death metal is going, I'm not complaining. Nope. What are your favorite metal records of 2022? Leave them down in the comments. Go with the gods, Forge Masters. Remember all that was promised to you. See you next time.